In this example, we're going to look at various ways that we can position a model within a dish shape. More specifically, we're going to look at how we can use the multiply as part of our setup so that we can be sure that the model doesn't come above the zero plane and that it sits nicely within the dish. We'll then take the part and look at various factors to bear in mind when creating the toolpaths to cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's go to File, Close, and then we'll go and create a new file. We'll give that a width of 10 inches, a height of 8 inches. We'll set Z0 to be on top of the material block, material thickness to be 3 quarters of an inch. We'll set our XY position to be in the lower left hand corner. We'll work with the high modeling resolution and then we can press OK. And so we want to create a vector that will represent the dish shape that we want to place our model inside. So I'm going to draw an ellipse, so I'll come over to create vectors and use the draw ellipse option. I'm going to give that a width of 9, a height of 7, and then we can press create and close. Now I'd like to align that to the centre of my material, so I'm going to select the vector, come over to transform objects and then use the align selected objects tool. And align that to the centre of the material and then we can close that down. So now we can go and import our component. So I'm going to go into the modeling tab, I'm going to come up here to the import component or a 3D model option. From the dish project folder we're going to bring in the horsehead underscore model dot crv 3d file and press open. You can see that's brought that in there. I'm just going to align that to the center of our material so we use align selected objects, I'm going to align to the center and we can press close. Let's just tile our windows vertically, that way I can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. I'd just like to make our part a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go over and set the size of that. I'm going to give that a width of 7.7, I'm going to link XY, keep that checked so it scales up in proportion, then we can press apply there, and close that down. The last thing I'd like to check is the height of that part, so we're going to go into the properties. I'm just going to change the shape height of this to be 0.43, then I'm going to add a base height of 0.05. So we have a combined value of 0.48. And so this total height is quite important as we plan to put it in a dish which is going to be half an inch deep. So we must make sure that this component is going to sit in the dish is slightly smaller in height than the dish itself. So the dish being at a value of half an inch or 0.5 uh, at the shape height of our model that's going to sit within the dish is going to be 0.48. And so we can be sure that when it sits in the dish it will completely sit within it there. Okay, so let's just close that down. Now when we're creating parts that are going to be recessed or dished below the modeling plane then it's important that we have a component that represents that plane and there's two reasons for this. One is it helps us to visualize the part and two is it helps us to prevent some possible issues that we may have uh, when it comes to machining and we'll talk more about that later on when we create the toolpaths. The most important thing is remembering to create this zero plane. So to do this we can use this option up here, model, add a zero plane, you can see in the 3D view it's added that plane there, you'll notice the values in this area here when I hover over that plane we can see that Z is at zero, hence the name of this component being called the zero plane. You can see that component has been added to our component tree also, however we can't see a grayscale in the 2D view. So let's go over to our layers tab. Okay, we can see that we have a zero plane layer that's currently switched off. If I switch that on, we can see the grey scale there. So I'm going to switch that off. And so when we create that zero plane, the software automatically creates that layer, moves it to the top of the layers list, and has it switched off so that it doesn't obscure any of the other components, grey scales or vectors. So let's go back into the modeling tab. So now we're ready to go and create the dish. So I'm going to select this vector here, I'm going to go over to the modeling tools, I'm going to use the option to create shape from vectors. Okay, I'm going to work with a curved profile, I'm going to make the angle of that to be 30 degrees. I'm going to scale this to an exact height of half an inch, remember we want my dish to be half an inch deep. I'm going to set that to subtract, I'm going to call that dish, we'll press apply, 
and then we'll close that down. And so from this point of view it doesn't look too bad however if I tilt that and take a look at that the y-axis we can see that there's areas that are clearly well above the zero plane and so the part isn't sat neatly within that dish shape and the reason for that is as the horse gets closer to the edge of our dish where it's shallower then the z-heights are pushing up above the edges there and so if we try to machine this on a piece of flat material all of those areas that are sticking above the dish and above the zero plane will become flat spots and so it's not always that easy to see areas that are sticking above a negative area in the 3D view. So to be sure, you can check the part using the scale Z height of the model, which is this option up here. And so the software tells us the maximum Z and the minimum Z. And in this case, when we're working with dish shapes, we should have absolutely nothing above zero in the maximum Z, as the highest point is our zero plane, which is at zero and we want everything to sit below zero. And so if you see a positive number in the maximum Z, uh, then you know that you have something coming over the zero plane there. And so we can see here that our model is going to go past our zero plane by 0.1374 inches. Okay, so we'll just OK that. Okay, so there's a few things that we could do here. One is we could look at making the horse's head smaller, either by reducing the Z height, or we could just shrink the size down, or we could look at increasing the angle of the dish in order for it to get deeper quicker. So let's have a look at an example of one of those. So we're just going to undraw the dish component. I'm going to select the dish vector here. I'm going to go and create shape from vectors. Okay, so this time we're going to up the angle, we're going to make that 60 degrees. Okay, we're going to go with everything the same and we're going to call this component Dish 60. And then we'll press Apply. Okay, we also must set that to Subtract as well. Then we can close that down. So let's have a look at that. We can see that the horse is still coming over the plane there, so let's look at uh, altering the size of the horse. So I'm going to go to the horse head model, right mouse click, I'd like to bring the grayscale up there. So I'm going to go to the 2D preview, we'll say move to front, then I'm going to select it again. I'm just going to hold down shift to scale it in proportion, and I'm just going to reduce that down. So now if we tilt that up, we can see that there's nothing coming above that plane there. We'll just double check that by going to scale Z height and we can see that the maximum Z is at zero. Okay, so we'll OK that. Let's put that in Z. So that is good. However, we have compromised the design where we have quite a big border and the dish is quite steep. And so what we want to do is create a set of components that will help us to keep the model that's sat within the dish below the zero plane at all times. And there is an alternate way that we can control what happens within a dish, but it does require you to use a slightly more complex function within the software. So let's have a look at that technique. So we're just going to um, undo, go to edit, I'm going to say undo size, and we're going to go and delete that dish 60, we're just going to switch on our original dish there. So we're going to look at a function in the software that allows us to multiply the relief. This is a rarely used function but it does have a good application for this sort of situation. Now the multiply works in just the same way as the other combined modes do. When we add a component to another component, then what we see in the 3D view is a result of the first component's pixels being added to the pixels of the second component. Now when we use the multiply, the same thing happens. Instead of adding pixels, it will multiply them. In this case, we're going to take advantage of the fact that when we multiply anything by zero, we always get zero and when we multiply something by 1, we always get the same thing. For example, if we multiplied 3 by 1, then we'd get 3. And so this may become clearer as we start to work our way through this example. And so there's three key areas to look at when we're creating a perfect dish shape. So one is the model that you're going to put within the dish. In this instance, it's our horse. Then there's the multiply, and then there's the dish shape. 
So to help myself, I'm just going to organise my component tree before I start creating copies of components and organising the order of the component tree. So I'm going to right mouse click on level 1. I'm just going to rename that level to be horse. Then I'm going to right mouse click on the horse level and use the option to insert a new level. I'm going to right mouse click and rename that level. I'm going to call this level multiply. I'm going to click in the space here. I'm going to right mouse click again and insert a new level. Right mouse click and rename that level. I'm going to call that dish. Okay, so I have my component tree somewhat organized at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dish and the zero plane by holding down shift to select both of those. Then I'm going to move them into the dish level. I'm going to right mouse click. I'm actually going to copy these or make a duplicate even. So I'm going to duplicate them. Okay, you can see them there. And I'm going to move these into the multiply level. And so now we have three levels. We have a dish level with a dish in the zero plane. We have a multiply level that has a copy of that dish in the zero plane from the dish level. And then we have our horse level, which contains the horse head model. I'm just going to switch off the horse level and the dish level for the time being, as I just want to focus on this multiply level. So we're going to go and look at the properties for this dish shape here. So if that's selected, let's go into the properties form. And so this shape is going to be part of our multiplying process. And what we want to do is we want it to go from 0 at the edge and then into 1 at the middle. So that when we come to apply the multiply, anything at the edge will be multiplied by 0 will become 0. And anything in the middle will be multiplied by 1, so it will be the same value. So to do this, firstly, I'm going to change this combine mode to add so it becomes a positive shape and then we're going to alter the shape height of that to be exactly 1. And so it doesn't matter if you're working in inches or millimetres, the value will always be 1. So let's just change the name of this component to be called dome and then we can close that down. So now we can go and change the combine mode of the multiply level to multiply. So let's right mouse click on the level, go to the combine mode and use the option to multiply that. And we can see that everything has disappeared in the 3D view. And that's because it's the only level that we currently have switched on. And as there is nothing in the list, it's multiplying everything by zero, which equals zero. And that's why we can't see anything here. So I'm just going to switch off the multiply level for the time being. I'm going to switch on the horse level. I'm going to maximise the 3D view there. I'm also going to look at that up the y-axis. So if we switch on the multiply level now, we can see how that's transformed our horse and the edges of the horse are tapering down. And that's because um, we have this dome that is multiplying from 1 in the middle to 0 at the edge. And so it's creating this effect where it's phasing out the object over the surface of that dome. And because we used a copy of our dish to create this dome, it's going to fade at the same rate as the dish curvature goes down. And so if we switch on the dish level, we can see that it's modified our horse's head component enough that it will sit perfectly within our dish shape. And so if we can check that by going over to scale Z height of model. And so we can see that the maximum Z is at zero. So we know that everything is sitting below the zero plane and will be machined as a negative shape so that we don't end up with any flat spots. So let's OK that. So this can be quite a difficult concept for you to understand, but if you follow the steps that we have done here, then it will work. The key things for you to remember is the component that you're putting inside the dish needs to be slightly smaller than the dish itself in order for it to fit inside. The dome within the multiply level and needs to be based on the same component as the dish, but it needs to go from zero to one unit high in the middle. And so you should get this to work regardless of the shape. 
Another nice thing that we can do now that we have this set up is that we can alter the composition and move the horse over if we wanted to. So I'm just going to tile our windows. I'm going to select the horse head model and a right mouse click, go to the 2D preview and move to front so we can see that grayscale there. I'm going to select that and I'm just going to nudge that over here and we can see that we're getting a rather pleasing result here at the edge of our dish. And what's happening is the horse is being multiplied by zero because we have a zero plane here and so it's not coming past zero at all. Another thing we could do is scale this up if we wanted to. So I'm going to select the horse and I'm just going to pull that out to make that a little bit bigger. And because I've scaled that up, I must make sure that I alter the shape height. So with that selected, we're going to go over to the properties form here and I'm going to alter this, change that to 0.43 and then the base height to be 0.05. I'm going to press space to enter that in. And we can close that and then just to make sure we'll go and scale the Z height of that and we can see maximum Z is at zero so it's sat well within that zero plane there. So we can OK that. Now if you wanted to replace the horse's head with a different component or components then you can do as long as you scale them so that they're a little bit smaller than the dish shape then you can guarantee that they would fit within the dish because of our multiplying level. So at this point it would be a good idea to save the file. So let's go to File, Save As and I'm going to call that Dish Model. And then you can access that from your project folder. So now we're going to look at some of the things that are important when calculating a toolpath for a recessed or dish model. So we'll go over and switch over to our toolpaths tab. We're going to go and set up our material. There's a few factors in here that is important when using a dished or recessed model. And so the first thing is our Z0 where we set that to. And in this example we're going to set that to the top of the block as this will allow you to very accurately set where the face of your material is that your dish is going to be machined down into. And that's going to give you the best chance of getting a nice crisp edge of your part. Secondly is the model position in the material, which is this area here. And in this example, I'm going to set the gap above the model to be zero, so that we're going to force the edge of our dish all the way up to the surface of our material here. And so then we'll go and check the other parameters in the rest of the form. But if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial, then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available, and the material that you are using. So we'll go ahead and press OK there. Depending on the material and the size of the part you're tooling, you may need to do both a roughing and a finishing pass. In a lot of cases, with a dish model, you'll find that a finishing pass on its own will work for you. When you do a finishing pass, the only time that you really load the cutter up is on the first pass. Typically, you don't want to bury the cutter to a nice deep depth and then run it along with the full force of the material on the tool because it will snap. In this case, with a dish, your first pass is almost going to be on the surface of your material. And so it's barely going to be taking any material and after that it's just going to go and run back and forward only shaving off the distance of your step over. So the force of the tool is much less than you get with the normal 3D tool pass. So you must make sure that this is safe for your setup and we will assume that for our example. So we'll go and calculate that finishing pass. So first I need to select my vector boundary which is this one here that represents our dish shape. Then we're going to come over into the 3D finishing toolpath. So then we'll go and select our tool. We can see we currently have an 8th inch ball nose selected. That's the tool I'd like to use. So I'm just going to use the edit option to check some of the settings and parameters in here. I'm not happy with those default ones so I'm going to press OK. Then we'll move on to the machine and limit boundary. We're going to make sure that we have our selected vector selected. Then for the boundary offset, we must make sure that that is zero, as we only want the centre of the tool to come up to the vector. We don't want it to come past that, as it's a dish shape. We only really have an offset if we're working with raised shapes. 
So let me move on to the area machine strategy. And to make sure that I'm going to be safe cutting the dish without the roughing toolpath, I'm going to select the raster strategy. If I use the offset, then there's the potential that it may need to lift up and move to a new spot in the part. Whereas if I select the raster, it won't do that as it's going to start from the bottom and work its way up to the top. Okay, so we'll just call that one 3D finish and then we'll press calculate. And then we'll go and maximize the 3D view. We can take a look at that, and then we'll preview that toolpath, see how that looks. Okay, and we can see that we have a nice looking part there. So I'm happy with that, so I'll be happy to go and save out the toolpath and cut that out on my machine. So I'm going to go and close that down. If that's selected, we're going to use the option to save toolpath. Make sure that that's uh, listed here. And then we'll go and select our appropriate post-processor, save that out, and then save the toolpath. And so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at ways that we can position a model within a dish shape. More specifically, we've looked at how we can use the multiply as part of our setup so that we can be sure that the model doesn't come above the zero plane and that it sits nicely within the dish shape. And then we've took that part and then we've looked at various factors to bear in mind when creating the toolpaths to cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's go ahead and save that. So I'll go to File, Save As, and the project folder, I'm just going to call that one Dish Toolpath. Save that, and you can access that from the project folder.